Hello, my name is Valeria and I am the EU Sustainability Specialist at RSCS. Today I would like to take some time to give you an overview of a policy that would greatly impact the built environment in Europe, the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. Revised in 2018, the directive will help to reach the building and renovation goals set out in the European Green Deal. Buildings in Europe are responsible for approximately 40% of EU energy consumption and 36% of energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. Buildings are therefore the single largest energy consumer in Europe. At present, almost 75% of the building stock is energy inefficient and 85% of existing buildings are still expected to be standing by 2050. At the, at the same time, only about 1% of the building stock is renovated each year. The building sector is crucial for achieving the EU's energy and environmental goals. Better and more efficient buildings will improve the quality of life of citizens by bringing additional benefits in health, green jobs and the economy. In October 2020, the Commission presented its Renovation Wave Strategy as a part of the European Green Deal. The Renovation Wave Strategy is an action plan to enable measures to boost buildings' renovation. Its objective is to at least double the annual energy renovation rate of buildings by 2030 and to foster deep renovation. To boost the energy performance of buildings, the EU has established a legislative framework that will include the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, EPBD, and the Energy Efficiency Directive, EED. Together, the two directives will promote policies to achieve a high efficient and decarbonized building stock by 2050, create a stable environment for investment decision and enable consumer and businesses to make informed choices. In December 2021, the Commission proposed the revision of the directive to help to reach the building and renovation goals. The directive upgrades the existing regulatory framework to reflect higher ambition and more pressing needs in social and climate action, while providing EU countries with the flexibility needed to take into account the differences in the building stock across Europe. The two main objectives of the directive are to contribute to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and finally energy consumption by 2030, and to provide a long-term vision for buildings and ensure an adequate contribution of the sector to achieving climate neutrality by 2050. The EPBD has four focus areas, renovation, decarbonization, financing and modernization. Renovation includes measures on energy performance standards, energy performance certificates, and the inclusion of national building renovation plans and renovation passports for individual buildings. Under decarbonization, we can find the introduction of a zero emission building as the new standard for new buildings, consideration for whole life carbon, and the phasing out of fossil fuels. For the financing, the Commission proposed measures such as sustainable finance and energy poverty alleviation and a deep renovation standard. Lastly, for the modernization and system integration, we can find the strengthening of infrastructure for sustainable mobility, a smart readiness indicator, and the improvement of indoor air quality. The proposed measure aimed to increase the rate of renovation, facilitate targeted financing for investment, and the modernization of the building stock. In this analysis, I will be using the targets included in the European Parliament's position, which was adopted in March 2023. Currently, the Parliament's position proposes more ambitious targets at the Commission's initial proposal. I will start this analysis with provision related to new building, then we will look at existing buildings and provisions for information tools. As of 2028, all new buildings must be zero emission buildings, while non-residential and public buildings must achieve the same targets already in 2026. The directive will promote stronger incentives for on-site renewables, energy district heating and energy communities. According to the Parliament's proposal, the life cycle global warming potential of new buildings will have to be calculated as of 2030 in accordance with the levels framework. Lastly, the requirement for infrastructure for sustainable mobility will be strengthened. For existing buildings, the directive will introduce a minimum energy performance standard to trigger renovation of worst performing buildings. Residential buildings will have to achieve energy performance class E by 2030 and D by 2033, while non-residential and public buildings will have to achieve the same ratings by 2027 and 2030, respectively. To achieve these targets, the directive 
established a supporting framework with a focus on vulnerable households to monitor the social impact of the implementation of the directive in each member state. In their national building renovation plans, member states will be expected to set up timelines to further improve the building stock by establishing long-term renovation strategies, aiming at decarbonizing the national building stock by 2050. This will include uh, indicative milestones from 2030, 2040, and 2050. Moreover, the National Building Renovation Plan will have to establish measures to remove fossil fuels heating systems and to take into account whole life cycle performance where buildings are undergoing a major renovation. As of new buildings, sustainable mobility targets will be strengthened. Lastly, the directive will include a definition of deep renovation and the introduction of a renovation passport to improve visibility on future costs for investors, valuers, and lenders. The last provisions that I will go over are on Energy Performance Certificates, or EPCs. By 2025, all EPC must be based on a harmonized scale of energy performance classes going from A to G, with A being the highest class representing zero emission building, while the lowest class G will include the 15% of worst performing building in each national building block. According to the revised Directive, EPC label requirements will be determined based on calculated or meter energy use by building type and typical user behavior on a member state by member state basis using available national data. Where no data is currently available, member states will have to start collecting it in order to set the standard for EPC labels in that country, which could take a significant amount of time after the EPBD requirement will come into effect. The proposed revision of the directive is now being considered by the Council and the European Parliament. Discussions are likely to last for some time, possibly even until the end of this year, as some of the key measures, such as minimum energy performance standards, energy performance certificates, zero emission buildings, and whole life carbon requirements, are still at the center of the debate between the European Parliament and the different member states. The Energy Performance of Buildings Directive is the European Union's main legislative instrument aiming to promote the improvement of energy performance in buildings. The decarbonization of the built environment is a core part of what we do at our SES, and we are aware of the challenges that this directive will pose on the construction and real estate sector. A challenge for the industry is the lack of clarity around definitions such as zero emission buildings and deep renovation. Furthermore, minimum EPC requirements vary across the member states, which could create the situation where landlords are no longer able to sell or rent spaces that do not comply with the legislation, as it is already the case for offices in the Netherlands. RSES has already started working with other stakeholders in Brussels to develop information related to the revised EPBD and challenges related to its implementation for our members. Thank you for listening. In the future, we are planning multiple WebF webinars on EU policy and sustainability. For more information, please visit our website or our social media channels.